Uh, any news on Friday the 13th? We only got like one small update on Friday the 13th, so let's go ahead and talk about that. Friday the 13th. And I don't even know how much of news you can consider this because um, all-time record shattered. I don't know what that means. Uh, but thank you, Blake6216, for the gifted. Really appreciate that. Five. I'm going to give you five high fives. One. Oh, my God. Did you add two more? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Okay. But we had Blumhouse here talking about them wanting uh, to uh, reboot Friday the 13th. That is on their list of franchises to touch. And, you know, maybe five, six years ago, people would have been like, yes, give it to Blumhouse. Blumhouse will knock it out of the park. After a Halloween trilogy and now what's happening with the Exorcist franchise, I don't know if fans are there. But let's read their comments right here. So they were doing an interview. Uh, and here we go. They say... Listen, I've gone on record uh, saying Halloween is the ultimate slasher for me. That's my favorite slasher film of all time. But Friday 13th as a franchise it is one that I just bow down to. I just love everything about it, Turk uh, revealed, one of the producers of Blumhouse. And if we were able to live in both worlds like we do with Halloween, then I'll be able to live... Uh, then to be able to live at Crystal Lake for a while would be so incredible. Now, his other comments talked about, like, what you would need to do in a Friday the 13th movie, and it sounded so simplistic, and honestly, it made me not want Blumhouse to get the rights, because I feel like we've already gotten so many of those. Uh, so here, Jason Blum says, Jason Blum and I, are, uh, or the producer, Ryan Turk says, Jason Blum and I are definitely in agreement that Friday the 13th is the thing we would love to get our hands on. I really want to go back to basics. You don't need many ingredients for a Friday the 13th film. You need a summer camp, you need campers, and you need Jason Voorhees in a mask. And I feel like that's kind of the problem now with Blumhouse. Now, Blumhouse is one of the smartest studios out there. Like, l let's just pull out their criteria Blumhouse movies I don't know if they're gonna be able to have it all here but Blumhouse is doing things the right way in Hollywood where they are making films on the cheapity cheap and because of that they churn out just so much freaking money let's see here if I can find the box office of them because looking at it it's crazy like something like Megan ended up making so much money so here we go we got movies like Get Out like, even like $176, Get Out was made for what? How, what was the budget on Get Out? Uh, just, just, just says here, the but dude, Get Out was made for not even $5 million. And look how much that thing made. $255 million. And you could just go down the list. They have all movies like that. The 2018's Halloween. That movie, the budget was $10 million. Pennies, pennies in Hollywood, my friend. Look at the amount of money they made back. That's like, again, simpler terms. You give someone $10, they give you back $255. That's a good deal. That is a banging deal. And even when things were like in the pandemic and they were um, they they were also doing the day and date release where you could see the movie on Peacock or you can pay to go see it like Halloween ends, this movie. Budget was, uh, let's see, where, where's the budget here? Oh, they don't have the budget listed. I know the budget was only 25, though. The budget for this was only 25, and this movie still made $104 million during the pandemic and on Peacock. So Blumhouse knows how to kill it, but I feel like, I don't know if horror fans are starting to catch up to this kind of cheaper way of making movies that, like, them saying... Like, oh, there w it wouldn't be that hard to make a Friday the 13th movie. We would just have to, you know, uh, put Jason in a camp, get some campers, get him the hockey mask, and boom, we got a Friday the 13th movie. Well, let me tell you, my friend, we already got the best version of that. We already got the Friday the 13th uh, remake that came out is exactly what you're talking about here. And I feel like that movie was not that expensive. I love uh, the remake they came out with. Uh, they, I, they do a great job of like putting together the events of the first, uh, three Friday the 13th movies, you know, so he gets the hockey mask introducing Pamela Voorhees. This Jason was cool. I liked like the little things they did where they gave him underground tunnels, which would explain how he got around the camp so good. He's got these little traps set up so you, so he knows where you're at. And so I was like, this movie was great and it made a ton of money too. Uh, I forget why they didn't continue it. I think maybe because the reviews were bad. But this is one of those movies that, like, the reviews were bad then, but it's looked favorably now. Let me see here. 
I want to look at what the box office was for that movie. So Friday the 13th, the 2009. Yeah, look at that. The budget of $17 million. Uh, and then it ended up making 92. Super profitable. Super profitable. So I don't know if I want Blumhouse to get Friday the 13th if they just want to go the simple route with it. Because if I'm being honest with you guys, there's there's two types of Jasons, okay? There's either your Jason that you have from Friday the 13th part one all the way to was it part five where we had fake jason five is where we had fake jason right a new beginning yes so you have human jason jason that's just a regular person a regular killer in a hockey mask doing things after part five happened bro jason just became a zombie he became this this heightened being and honestly that's fun jason to me i kind of prefer fun jason um so cool you guys tell me yeah part five was fake jason and then from there they just continue going crazy with it you know this is the jason that came back to life through a lightning bolt then he goes on to new york and, and, and like is is beating up people boxing style on rooftops and then we eventually get to jason x where he's a full-blown half sentient robot whatever you want to call him this was a fun jason part of me would want the new friday 13th to be a balance of the two where we could do some of the realistic things, but I would love the franchise to start going in a crazy way and just doing fun stuff with Jason because that's what made like the first four movies kind of repetitive, uh, in my opinion, because it's like it's just a human guy with an axe with a with a machete going around. I feel like there's newer things you could do with it. But, you know, I, I kind of like uh, Jason X. I think it's a fun movie and I, I like that version of Jason. That's almost like a zombie unkillable and there's different things you could do with like like even the opening of Jason X is so funny to me that like they cryogenically freeze him and he's in in like this crazy future. Just imagining Jason in the future in a future timeline that would be so much fun. But yeah, that's what Blumhouse wants to do if they get the rights to it, which could be a possibility. Right now they're currently still trying to figure out the rights situation with Friday the 13th. I think and it's coming very close. They already figured out the TV side of things uh with Friday the 13th. So if that gets figured out, Blumhouse is going to make a bid and they're going to try and get their hands on the hockey boy mask man. And if they do, now we know it'll just be a movie kind of like the 2009 remake where it's campers at a camp. Jason shows up, does some slashing movie ends. Pretty simple, straightforward. Uh, I'd be more curious what they do with the sequels. You know, if they try to take it to the high level or they just keep it simple as always. But, you know, that's what we got going on in the Friday 13th world. Still nothing. I'm still waiting to hear on the TV show side of things.